human rights, um, uh, sexual ex exploitation of children and women, human trafficking, uh, cybercrime. Um, how do you bring those issues to bear at a time when the world's more concerned about the economy and survival? How do you keep those alive in the minds of the policymakers of Europe? But the issues you've just mentioned, which are indeed uh, core concerns for me, are all indeed human rights issues. And human rights issues should remain at the front of our concern, e uh, I would say even more in times of economic and financial difficulties, because the priorities uh, could, could be set in a way that these uh, issues are being neglected, and they are very serious issues. Uh, children's rights have come become uh, much more uh, to the to the surface uh, than than they did in the past uh, and i believe that the council of europe has played a, a very important role in this respect and i have been encouraging this very strongly and i believe that the council of europe is indeed a very good uh, structure uh, because we have a number of tools uh, to ensure that these rights are being promoted i mean such as uh, we heard yesterday you have no army you have no enforcement powers how do you in, how do you ensure or try to ensure that people uh, obey uh, human rights. Well, the, for the, the major tool we have is, of course, the European Convention of Human Rights, which has a very uh, um, good uh, uh, enforcement mechanism, a monitoring mechanism, which is the European Court of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. Uh, on specific areas like uh, ch children's rights, we have also developed a number of le other legal tools, uh, which for instance is the Convention Against Sexual uh, Abuse and Exploitation of Children, which contains very specific provisions uh, which uh, uh, compel our member states to take measures uh, to protect children, uh, both in terms of prevention, uh, but also in, in terms of prosecution of the offenders, the sex offenders. Well, in, in 2009, why are we even talking about this? Shouldn't this have been uh, in a fait accompli, uh, sexual exploitation of children, human trafficking? Uh, why aren't member states doing more about such basic, simple human rights? Well, the uh, children's rights are, of course, very clearly reflected in the, in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. It's actually one of the most uh, ratified instruments in the world, but the reality is that uh, a lot of these rights are not being respected, and uh, it calls for much more specific action, and in particular, comprehensive national strategies, uh, which include institutions which are there to, uh, to monitor the implementation of, the, of, the, uh, un of this universal text. Um, and so, it's, it calls for for awareness raising, but it calls also for a very firm assertive action by, by the authorities, and the Council of Europe's instruments are designed to ensure that. Well, as the United States has found, if there's money to be made in, uh, in vice, it's going to happen. If uh, people can make money smuggling human beings across borders, uh, is there really any way to stop it? Well, it, true, it's uh, sometimes a very lucrative business, trafficking in human beings, uh, 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 according to my estimations, is one of the third uh, sources of income uh, arising out of organized crime. Um, but uh, after trafficking in arms and, uh, uh, and other criminal activities. But um, the way we can uh, address it uh, is to concentrate on the victims, uh, and to uh, uh, really involve uh, much more uh, awareness raising amongst society as a whole that these are totally unacceptable phenomena, which must, uh, which really also uh, undermine uh, the society as a whole. It's totally unacceptable that part of the society, particular vulnerable uh, groups like children, are uh, are being deprived of their most fundamental rights. So. Well, That's why we act. Sometimes these victims are not European. Uh, you uh, cover sexual tourism. Recently we've seen a spate of cases where Europeans have been arrested in places like Thailand and Excellent. Asia for uh, sexual exploitation of children. Yes. Uh, how is the Council of Europe working with your counterparts in those uh, countries that are peculiar to this problem? Uh, well, there are two things to say in this respect. First of all, our convention texts, in particular the one on, on uh, concerning sexual abuse and exploitation of children, is open to non-member states of the Council of Europe, so open to ratification by other states, like our cybercrime convention, which also uh, yeah. contains uh, a very important uh, element relating to child uh, Pornography. They, they go hand in hand, of course. Uh, they go hand mm -hmm. in hand. Uh, the other thing is that um, 
of course, our concern is, as I said before, it's prevention, but also it's protection of the of the victims, but prosecution of the offenders. And uh, our Convention Against Sexual Abuse and Exploitation of Children provides for, um, uh, does away with the double crimin uh, criminality requirement, which means mm -hmm. that even if the offense is not uh, considered as a criminal yeah. offense in the country where it is committed, we can prosecute the offender. There's no safe haven for the offender. Offender. So we have a global impact with our instruments in that respect. Um, te technical uh, advances being what they are, uh, can't, isn't there some way to track the uh, ISPs of these people who use the internet to try to, uh, to lure children? Um, uh, I think that you're touching there upon a very important issue. Um, Obviously, uh, cybercrime cannot be combated only uh, by uh, involving uh, the, the authorities and governments. We must also work with the ISPs and make, uh, and make sure that uh, they assume their responsibilities. Um, and um, this is something which is, of course, very, very difficult, uh, complex, because it raises issue of proper balance between freedom of expression and, uh, and, uh, and on the other hand, the protection of, 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 of human rights of potential victims, but I think that there is an increasing uh, awareness of ISP themselves uh, that they have to, uh, to have to assume this responsibility. And I'm pushing, uh, together with a number of member states of the Council of Europe, to address this issue of the responsibility of, of ISPs. And I'm very pleased to say that we have some major, uh, let's say, private companies also on board in our uh, project on pr combating uh, mm -hmm. Crime. Uh, because it seems if uh, some of these advertisers can find me on on, uh, on the web, then certainly certainly the police could if you were doing some, doing something Absolutely. wrong. Um, the United States has something called an Amber Alert when children go missing. Yes, um, it's on television, radio, yes. signs all over the country. It's Is there any uh, counterpart that can be done in Europe to, across the member states, uh, as well as the other countries that you cover in the council? Uh, well, there are individual initiatives in that respect, which I highly appreciate because you, you just have to you have to galvanize the whole society when when children are disappearing, and it, it obviously again it's not something which can be done by only uh, uh, alerting the law enforcement uh, uh, officials. We have to need, we need to involve every every everybody who has a possible uh, potential role to bring the child back. Uh, to where the child b belongs. Um, the national initi initiatives exist. It, there is not yet uh, uh, a European initiative in this respect. Why not? Except for uh, there, there is a centre in Brussels uh, mm -hmm. which deals very effectively with that. Uh, I would encourage it. Uh, I definitely would encourage it. But it, obviously it, it cannot be territory, be, precisely because it cannot be terri limited uh, territory. If the, the child was kidnapped in Romania and the kidnapper knows there's no Amber Alert in Moldova, they just go across the, the line. So, so I, would, I would be very much in favor of such a such mm -hmm. a mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, well, that brings us to the Eastern Partnership. The EU is reaching out to, to some, of those, some of those countries. Um, what is the Council of Europe's role, especially since some of them, uh, well, for example, Belarus is uh, on a suspension status, yet Belarus uh, was praised recently by the UN for its effort to fight human trafficking. How do you bring those into the fold uh, under the aegis of what you want to see happen? Um, Yes, the Eastern Partnership is a very interesting uh, initiative, which uh, which has been discussed recently between uh, senior uh, officials of the Council of Europe and the European uh, Commission together. And it's obvious that that uh, that it, there is a, there is a this, this is a space for dialogue between the uh, the Council of Europe and the European Union because we have very uh, firm commitments on behalf of these states in the area of democracy, human rights, and good governance, uh, which uh, which are very relevant for, for this uh, for this partnership to to be meaningful. Uh, you mentioned Belarus. Belarus you know, is not a member of the Council of Europe, its status with the Parliamentary Assembly is going in a, in a good, di in a, in a po is developing in a positive direction, decision has yet to be taken. But I wanted to tell you in this respect that I'm going to Minsk uh, next week uh, to open an info point uh, of the Council of Europe in the, in the university in Minsk, which is, I think, a very, very good development because it will enable uh, people in, in Belarus to, uh, to familiarize themselves with the, with the values and, uh, and the principles on which the Council of Europe bases all its action. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, battle, uh, a fighter for human rights, I'm Andy DeBellis, uh, NETV in Brussels.